Welcome to Mind Pump. This is the top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast in the world. On this, the planet. This is a Q&A episode. This is where we answer fitness and health questions asked by listeners like you. And the way we open the S episode is by talking about current events. We talk about our lives. Sometimes we mention our sponsors. So here's the breakdown of what happened in today's Mind Pump podcast episode. We started by talking about our favorite children's books. You know, the ones that we read when we were children that Adam still reads as an adult? Yeah. Then we talked about my son's workouts. I've been training him now pretty consistently, and he's getting stronger, and it's a lot of fun to watch. I talked about how it takes more work to build muscle than it does to keep muscle. This is good news for those of you guys stuck at home without gym access. Then we talked about caffeine cycling. Taking caffeine every single day really reduces its beneficial effects. If you take caffeine because you like the boost of energy it gives you, there's a way that you could cycle their use. Now, a lot mm. of pre-workouts contain caffeine as one of their main drivers of energy. One of our favorite pre-workout supplements is Pulse, made by Legion. But a lot of people don't know this. Pulse comes in two types. Besides all the different flavors, you can also get Pulse with caffeine or stimulant-free pulse, which does not have caffeine. And the way I like to use them is no pulse, pulse. three days a week for my heavy, hard workouts. I use the pulse pre-workout supplement with caffeine. And on the days in between, I go stimulant-free so that my body can reacclimate and I can get those magical effects of caffeine when I do use it again. Now, Legion is a company that we're sponsored by. And because you're a Mind Pump listener, you get hooked up. So here's what you do to get a discount. Go to buylegion.com. That's B U Y. L-E-G-I-O-N dot com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump at checkout. It'll give you 20% off your first order. If you're an existing member of Legion, you'll get re- double rewards points uh, for using that code. We are Legion. Then we talked about Ramadan, how that's going on right now, and strategies around the fasting period. Uh, we talked about Elon Musk and why I have a, mag- uh, a major crush on the guy. He is uh, handsome. Then we talked about birthday cake flavored high protein cereal so one of our other sponsors magic spoon makes a cereal that has zero grams of sugar is high in whey protein so high quality protein tastes amazing they have lots of amazing flavors like blueberry uh there's fruity flavors cocoa flavor and the new flavor birthday cake oh my god i can't wait uh, anyway we got a hookup for you because you listen to mind pump just go to magic spoon.com forward slash mind pump You'll automatically get a discount and free shipping. By the way, their products come with a 100% happiness guarantee, meaning you get a refund if you don't like their product. Oh, and by the way, use the code MINDPUMP for How all How could that. you not be happy on birthday cake? Then we talked about all the shows that we like on uh, Netflix and on streaming services. And Adam talked about a show called Black as F on Netflix. I guess it's a great show. As fuck. Then we got into answering the questions. Thanks, Justin. I didn't want to cuss, but thank you for doing that. I did it for you. The first question we answered was, why do elite gymnasts look so strong and muscular, even though they're doing so much training, they're not resting their muscles? Like, what's going on? Next question. This person wants to know if if you should eat and train differently depending on your body shape. And they're referring to mesomorph, ectomorph, and endomorph. I'm oblong. Or is that a myth? Uh, the next question, this person wants to know, look, for long-term health and longevity, should I do trap bar deadlifts or straight bar deadlifts? And the final question, this person wants to know, in our opinion, what are the top three sports that give people the best aesthetics? In other words, what three sports produce the best-looking bodies? Definitely badminton. Also, it's a new month. That means we have a new promotion. We have a program called MAPS Starter. All you need to follow this program are dumbbells and a physio ball. That's it. You don't need gym access, just dumbbells and a physio ball. Now, physio balls, if used properly, help you with stability, balance. They help you develop perfect form for resistance training. MAPS Starter is the perfect program for somebody who's just getting started in resistance training or for somebody who wants to work backwards, focus on their stability, focus on their form so that when they do go back to the gym, they have better workouts. Now, that program is 50% off right now. Map starter. Here's how you get that discount. Just go to mapsstarter.com. That's M-A-P-S-S-T-A-R-T-E-R.com and use the code STARTER50. That's S-T-A-R-T-E-R-5-0, no space, for the discount. Dude. One, two, three. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, one, <laughs> two, three, go. One, two, three, go. That's my new thing with my son right now. Like he 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 cracks up when I count to him. One, 
He laughs. Oh, he, oh laughs. he, it's like the go-to move. Right? I'm sure you guys have. My this. kids get scared when there's, I start counting. There's always like a thing, right? That it, every... he's already talking shit to Adam. Right? Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> he's like, like, count. Like, yeah. I'm not he doing count. nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> One. I do that, and I get this like serious look on my face, and he just starts busting. Up Does he really? Yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah, that's yeah. so Funny. great. That's I love fun. the video you're posting. Where you're posting him read the book. The, what was that blue truck one? Yeah, it's his favorite right now. Yeah. Blue truck. Oh, you know, actually, the other one. Have you guys seen Jimmy Fallon's uh, book? No. No. Oh, you guys haven't seen it? Great kids book. For especially for the fathers out there, so it's called Dada, and it's like your 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 uh your child's first words, and then the whole book, okay, like most child's books are like animals, you know, like the frog, the rabbit, the, yeah. the horse, and yeah. each page is this. On the left, it's uh, a horse, and then on the right, there's a horse. The horse on the left says Dada, and then the horse on the right says Nah, and then the the pig on the left Dada. Oink. And it's like literally just the whole book <laughs> is data and then yeah. like the sound of the animal. Data, then the sound of the animal. He busts up. He Does he really? Oh, he thinks it's hilarious. But, Katrina's like, of course. Yeah. Of course that's his favorite book. Oh, that's so yeah, great. Yeah. Oh, there this it is. is. Yes, that's the book yeah, right that looks there. looks good. Epic. Dude. Did you guys have a favorite book when you were guys were really young? Do you remember that far back? Were you guys when no, kids? I have no idea. Really? Yeah. I had a book called uh, Danny the Dinosaur. I remember it. It's called Denny the Denny Dinosaur. Denny the Last Dinosaur. So I remember. Uh, and well, well, let me tell you. So okay. I couldn't no, read. That's Denver. My yeah, bad. Denver. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. I couldn't read, but my mom would read me this book, and she read it to me. I don't know how many times in a row, mm. and then I memorized it. So I totally no tricked, way. totally tricked my mom. <laughs> so she was reading, and then I went ahead, and she's like, "What?" She's like, can you can you read this? And I just did the whole book. Yeah. And she was like, blown Honey, away. we have a savant. He's a wizard. Yeah. Nope. That's, oh, is, is that, that it? it right there? <gasps> oh, oh, bro, my you got to buy that. God. That was your book. It's probably a terrible book. Yeah. <laughs> is it? Probably so. Or it has some like uh, underlining political statement. Yeah. I just it. remember Green Eggs and Ham. That's like about the only one I remember. Did, yeah. did, you, yeah. did you read a lot of Dr. Seuss? Like, a lot of Dr. Seuss and, uh, you know, where the sidewalk ends. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I forget the name. Of that wild word, is it the wild things? Is that? Oh, no, that's a good huh. one. But so, that's a good one too. Where so, the wild things are. Yeah, where the wild things are. I remember that. I remember Bernstein Bears. Mm. I remember uh, my mom reading a Everybody lot of. Everybody says that one wrong, well, isn't it? It's the Berenstein. It's the Berenstein. Or Berenstein? Oh, it, oh, I thought it was Bernstein. No, I know. I don't. No, no, Berenstein. Yeah. I need an it's been like thirty years since I've said it. So, <laughs> so. Berenstein Bears. Uh, go, wasn't it's there Berenstein? another? Berenstein. That's what it is. I think so. Yeah. Oh. Let's see if Doug finds it. I think so. Yeah, Doug. Doug knows. Yeah, yeah. my Doug, sister. Doug, so remember, yeah. we brought up on the show the other day the uh, the mouse one, right? Mm -hmm. That was actually my sister's favorite book. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. yeah. So when she heard us talk about it on the show, she's like, "Oh my god, that was my Baron favorite." Stain. Baron Stain. Oh, Baron Bears. Stain. Yeah. Baron Stain. Like, Bears. Like you stain something. Yeah, there was a there were a lot of books with like bears when I was a kid. That's what I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Still. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't yeah. there a book? Wasn't there a bear that was what? Yeah, there's Paddington Bear. bear. There's, there's Smokey the Bear. No, there, no, Paddington Bear. Oh, Paddington Bear. That yeah. was the jam. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was the best. And then you get Pooh Bear. Yeah. Never got into Pooh Bear. You guys into Pooh Bear? Never got into Pooh Bear. You know what I hated was Eeyore. Like, yeah. come on, guy. Lighten <laughs> yeah. up. No, he's a poor guy. He's depressed. Dude. So I was into it's Winnie. obnoxious. I wasn't into Winnie the Pooh. You weren't into Winnie the Pooh at all? Never. Oh, wow. Never. Uh, I thought it was so stupid. Really? I yeah. guess I'll just walk over here. Bro. <laughs> Shut hey. the fuck up, Eeyore. <laughs> he's like, like, lighten up. You're bro, killing everybody's vibe. He's clinically depressed. That's not something you can make fun of. <laughs> the poor guy. I'm just saying, you he's know. He's doing his oh, best. Oh, I don't have a tail. Somebody stole it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. What about, Same old story. I like Piglet, though. I, I'll be honest. Yeah. He was always worried. Well, I think Piglet was... His, wasn't Piglet the smartest one of the group? Yeah. No, and he, he was got just, Tigger, who was just, like, bouncing everywhere like a jackass. Yeah. yeah. And that's when I learned my first joke. What? Uh, why was Tigger looking in the toilet? Because oh. he wanted to play with Pooh. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's, let me tell you something. That is a good first joke. Though. That's that's a hit with the kids. It is. I'll be honest. Any, any Pooh fart, you yeah. know, uh, excrement. Which is why I didn't like Winnie the Pooh. I never understood his name, and I could never take him seriously as yeah. a kid. I thought to myself, why would they name a, a character Pooh? Yeah. Didn't the movie version do really well that came out? Did you see that, Doug, by chance? Uh, it came out. It was uh, Christopher Robbins. And I didn't was, see it. I think Disney did a a, uh, a movie version of it. It was like live action version yeah, of yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, oh, I, I I yeah. I think it did really well. I didn't. I don't know if I watched it or not. I think it was one of those ones I put on and then I like got, did something else. Really? But, yeah. yeah. I'm going to be reading the Jungle Book. my next kid, which you know they'll, yeah, they'll be born good. at the end of the year, um, the Arnold Schwarzenegger Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's a little girl. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't even. 
don't even care. Yeah, let's yeah, do this. Yeah, and once yeah, upon a time, there was it. a shoulder press. This one works the <laughs> anterior deltoid, and I'll point to the little squishy uh, arm, yeah. you know? You yeah. see that? Take a look, make, it, make it happy while we're doing it so, so what, fond is, memories. What, what is your guys' totally. theory it, do you do you believe that we could do that like, i want to believe this right that i can that they're like a blank slate i could just yes <laughs> that i could sub subconsciously you know no. subconsciously get him to like like basketball by the little things that like by connecting happiness and play when <laughs> basketball is on yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. or bringing him, just make everything else seem like a drag <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to, you know putting a basketball <laughs> in his bed with him like just subtle stuff you but know what i'm saying nothing crazy every time yeah, you, you, you gotta, get him the little Jordan just yeah. stuff. This right? is what you do. I got it. I got it for you. You just flip through the channels of the TV, and then when you get to basketball, put a little lollipop near his mouth. Look, yeah. Make him lick it, and then, <laughs> yeah. keep, and then keep going yeah, through. Association. Yeah, yeah. It, soccer. It soccer comes on. Put yeah. some hot pepper in his mouth. Oh, you don't like that, do you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know right. I mean, I feel like I could do that. Right. Is I, that bad? Is that a bad thing? You know, you can, but you know what? If you push too hard, well, that's so. that. So to me, that's the art of it, right? Yeah. Like you can't be obsessive about it where you force them on it because even if they do yeah, do it, then they resent you for it later on, dude. I want that my i have a family member like that whose dad mm -hmm. was excellent at soccer i mean if this guy didn't grow up poor and, and have to start working at a young age i'm sure he would have made it at a high level so he really pushed upon his son mm -hmm. to play soccer and as a little kid he was really really good so that, so his dad got even more aggressive about it but then as he got older he resented it he resented it because his dad pushed him so hard mm -hmm. so by the time he got to high school He's like, I don't want to play anymore. I'm not playing anymore. And the funny thing is, looking back, when you talk to him, he's an adult now. He's in his mid-30s. He's like, man, he goes, I wish my dad didn't push me so hard. He goes, I bet you I could have been great at that sport. But he pushed me so hard, I didn't want to do it. I mean, I, I, I look at it the same way like you're introducing weightlifting to your son right mm -hmm. now, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like my idea is just that I know better than to be like, make him do it, right? But if he sees me doing it, yeah. watching it, enjoying it, his mother – Loving it, us connecting around this sport. Right. Maybe it's like a thing we can do together. Right. So maybe that will make him. I hope that one day he comes to me and says, Hey, Dad, I want to play ball. Yeah. You How's know, that like, been going, yeah. by the way? Oh, so. so good. So, so what I've done with him. So I was extremely motivated when I first started working out. And what's hard to do is hard to compare how you were to your kid. Yeah. Because at 14 years old, I mean, I started lifting weights and that was it, man. I was in it. And, but I was also very driven by being very insecure. Mm. I was real skinny super insecure about that and it, that's what drove me and you know I'll, I'll pat myself on the back my kids are secure with themselves which i feel good about but he doesn't so he doesn't have that kind of drive which is good i don't want him to be driven by insecurities I, I did a lot of bad things to my body because of it but i do know the benefits of resistance training i think it's an awesome thing that you know kids should do adults should do and so what i'm trying to do what i try to do is introduce them and create like good associations but not push upon them so what I would do is I'll, I'll take my son outside and into the garage or whatever and, hey, let's do a workout. But then as we're working out, I'll put like fun music on that he likes. We'll talk about it. We'll joke. We'll talk about school. Mm -hmm. And so really he's, he, he's enjoying it because it's a good time with that. And I'm not taking the workout too seriously. Yeah. We're doing an exercise, then talking afterwards, oh, hanging out. Yeah. yeah, doing another. I'm not like hammering him like, no, you got to do more. None of that stuff. And what's happened is – it's been very inconsistent. Sometimes I can tell he'll, he wants to work out and we do it. Other times he's not so much, depending on how busy he is, whatever. But little by little, the consistency is starting to improve a little bit. And especially since they're doing uh, work, you know, school at home, we have more time. And so we've now strung together a couple months of consistent <coughs> two to three days a week of full body workouts. Whether he's at my house or at his mom's house, I'll go grab him take him through a workout and yesterday we had such a we had an amazing moment yesterday oh yeah yes so i i've, I've strategically picked certain things that i know that will stay st that'll stand out in his mind right number one i told him you know when we first start if he asked me questions i use it as an opportunity to kind of you know to teach him stuff and so he asked me like what are some of the best exercises like which ones are are they all good or hmm. so i'm like oh bar and i use this as an opportunity I'm like barbell squats i said I, when I was working out as a kid, I remember when I finally could do a barbell squat properly and I started to get stronger at it, I said I got so strong and I built so much muscle in such a short period of time. So now we have that barbell squat as a measure. Mm. And when we first started working out, he couldn't do a barbell squat. He didn't have the mechanics. Knees would do this thing. You know, he's tight in certain areas. It was hard for him to maintain his hip position. So I've slowly, slowly progressed him. And yesterday, for the first time, we did full barbell squats with the empty barbell, but full barbell squats for the first time. Oh, so that nice. was exciting. 
And then the second one was one that he picked. When we first started working out, you know, we would talk about, you know, exercise and stuff. And he's like, oh, there's this kid at my school who's a gymnast. And he did like 10 pull-ups. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, you ever try, you know, do you know how many pull-ups you could do? He's like, I don't, I can't, I can't do one. He goes, I try. And I kind of, it, it's really hard for me. So I kept that in the back of my mind. And so what I've been doing with them in our training is, you know, some weeks, sometimes we'll do a dumbbell row or a cable row. And I'm doing that specifically to, to correct his posture. I think that's real important for kids. But I also will put a, a resistance band around the, the, the safeties so that he can stand on it and then practice pull-ups. Well, yesterday we were in our workout and I thought, all right, I think it's time to have him try to just do a pull-up without it. Yeah. yeah. And he did. He grabbed the bar and he, he, he muscled did it. he did it he muscled himself up and the look on his face man dude yes he lit were up were you a little was, nervous that you might have uh, brought that up a little too soon exactly i thought fuck if i brought this up too soon <laughs> yeah cuz <laughs> yeah cuz then it could go the other way then direction. i got a little damn it no dude he was able and he did two of them he was able to do another one right afterwards he showed Jessica in fact oh that's and, awesome oh dude what a confidence builder so pumped now when you when you reference all, all the bad things that you did to your body are you referring to your low back tattoo and nipple piercing or yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that tribal butterfly yeah, you, uh, you reference that all the time yeah, I'm just curious it. if that's for the audience so they know what you're talking about purple barbell nipple tattoo <laughs> did I ever tell you guys about Ooh. the time when I found out my workout partner had that uh, makes me sensitive had, uh, right nipple now. nipple uh, piercing no dude and he's such a like a like a lumberjack kind of kind of like Justin. Like he's like a Justin. Yeah, that would be a surprise, right? If yeah. Justin pulled his shirt off and also he's got barbells through <laughs> yeah. his neck. Hey guys, I'm just like playing with I'm it. Like, like, whoa. Yeah. I, and here yeah. I thought I knew everything yeah. about you. Yeah. You've been hanging out with Joe Exotic? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on here? Yeah. Start wearing mesh shirts. You no, know, dude, just we, so you guys can see it. I worked this guy worked for me for a long time. He was a trainer. We lifted weights together. Who was it? I wonder he's who's super is conservative. Is this Ryan? So I'm not gonna say his name. Oh god, come on. I sell super, everybody out on this. Hey, super conservative, like kind of guy or whatever. Didn't think anything of it. We just worked out together and one day we were in the locker room and he yeah. takes his shirt off and he has this hoop around his nipple. Oh, it was a hoop, too. It was a hoop, dude. Oh, wow. I was like, like what he, the hoop? Just hoop? one or both? No, it was one. Oh, wow. I was like, well, okay. Like, like you can hook that up to something. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you can drag that across the room. Car battery. Yeah. Anyway, that's not something. Interesting. You do. Anyway, yeah. so I, I got a DM, uh, uh, a couple DMs I've had now. Um, and actually, every week I get a couple that are similar to this where people are, again, we're still in this situation where people are, are working at, at home. And people are very, uh, especially the workout fanatics, are afraid of losing muscle. What And the questions typically are like, what can I do to prevent muscle loss? I, I don't have heavy weights. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have heavy weight you know, access or whatever. And you know, one thing that I try to tell them, and I thought this was important to talk about in the podcast, and this is true, by the way. This is backed by, by scientific study. And if you talk to anybody who's very experienced, uh, they'll tell you this is also true. It takes much more work to build muscle than it does to keep. So, you know, if I have to gain five pounds of lean body mass, I have to work out hard and have a really good routine and a really good diet and protein intake needs to be really high. Mm -hmm. But if I've kept that five pounds of muscle on my body for a certain period of time, let's say I've, I've maintained it for a year or two years, <clears throat> if I reduce my intensity, reduce my volume, reduce the weight, my protein intake goes down, I don't lose it. Uh, I don't lose that muscle very quickly. It, it sticks around much longer and studies will actually support this so it's a little word of confidence uh to people out there like you know losing muscle is harder it's actually you don't lose it that quickly you, mm -hmm. as long as you maintain some activity and some resistance um it's not like you have to maintain what you did before you know yeah, yeah personally I've, I've always found it rebounds a lot faster than i always anticipate you know it's one of those things i don't know if you amount that to muscle memory or just yeah it, really the work that you've put in like uh, over the decades uh, you know that that, that that's like a go-to. Your body just like comes right back to that kind. Of I feel goals. like there's a couple of variables here though that are important to point out. Like one, uh, I do think that the the muscle memory plays a huge role huge. because the way I feel now in my late 30s is significantly different than when I felt as a 23, 24 year old boy who had already who only had about four or five years lifting experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not enough time under the belt. Yeah, if I had about during that time, and I was very consistent back then, but if I did fall off. It felt like I lost all my gains, and then it felt like a struggle to get to get back to where I was. Where you know, after now having you know more than almost two decades of lifting, it doesn't feel like that at all. I feel like I can totally fall off and then get back into a routine. And when within a couple of weeks, I'm I feel like I'm already getting close to it. Maybe not strength wise, like when I hit PRs and a deadlift or squat, but definitely enough to like fill back out to where I don't feel or notice that big of a difference. But I think that. 
that apl- says a lot about this the time under the iron. Oh, right? big time. Yeah. You know how hard it was for me to maintain my body weight at 190 pounds forever? Now, 190 pounds for me is like I'm either shredded or that's about as skinny as I'm going to get. Right. Mm-hmm. Whereas before, you know, if I stopped lifting or I wasn't lifting, it was like my body wanted to get down to 160, 170. So it does. It does stick around. You do build a certain amount of muscle that is more permanent, I would say. Never permanent. But more permanent than you would expect. And then I think there's also the the genetic factor that is where we all have this individual variance, right? Like, oh, yeah. uh, for sure, I've had friends, um, and this is where I think we're different. Like me and you are probably more different than Justin. At least for sure, I know I'm different than Justin in this aspect. Where, you know, he tends to really hang on to solid mass way better than I do. Like I, yeah, just can't I, get rid of it. I lose. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the grass is always green on their side. I know, right? That's the thing. So that's the drawback. The drawback is, you know, I just have to look at a treadmill and body fat falls off yeah. of me. So that's the plus. The shitty part is the minute I stop. I was lifting. waiting for the other half of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He keeps selling muscle. Yeah. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Also. Well, yeah. but don't you guys remember communicating this to clients, right? Totally. Like it's uh, you're always trying to explain to them. Like I understand that you've struggled with X your whole life, but the truth is there's positives to that, mm-hmm. right? There's, there's, a, there's a positive and a negative to whatever uh, side of the genetic spectrum you fall on. Either you're somebody who puts mass on really good, which great. You know, what's great about that. You can build muscle, you can build your metabolism relatively easy. You get strong, easy drawback of that is it's kind of a grind to get really shredded, yeah. you know? And then if you're the other side where it's like, man, I stay lean all the time. Well, the struggle is yeah. to put on weight put and on. keep it on. So you know, grass is do always green. You, on do you guys side. remember, like, have, do you have an experience of extreme uh, where you experienced muscle memory to the extreme at like post injury or anything like that? Do you, do you ever, have you guys ever experienced that? To the extreme. No. Um, well, I mean, I know after my, after I broke my arm, yeah, my, my rehab for, for my knee, like it was real quick. Isn't it trippy? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. There, there was a time when I'll never, I'll actually never forget this. And I wish that I took a video or a picture because it was, it was gross. Most people probably wouldn't like it, but it blew my mind. So when I had when I tore uh, uh, my ACL MCL, I had been at one of the I had just came off of being like the biggest I'd ever. I was been two thirty five plus mm-hmm. around the time. This was before competing, but it was I was big. I was n- not as lean as I was competing, but I was m- the biggest amount of mass I've ever built. You were so, thick. Yeah, it was thick. It was very thick, and my yeah. legs my legs were some of the biggest they'd ever been. And then I get this I tear I tear my uh, uh, a- ACL MCL and. I'll never forget how fast it atrophied uh, from being off of it to the point where I'll never it was in there for rehab and I'm I'm sitting with the, the therapist and we we roll up my my leg, the, the the bad one, right, that's been injured, and I could grab the skin. So I could grab my skin like this and I could move it. Oh, I mean it had ugh. like it literally had like four inches wow. of of play and it was like the most gruesome and but crazy weird thing i'd ever seen on my own body oh it was wild (laughs) you could you could fold it over it was a trip on how much i had atrophied but then as boy as soon as i got better and i was back to training to to think you know my whole life to gain a quarter of an inch of size somewhere would be a big deal and i was i probably lost four inches of mass right there and it was like back within months that happened to me when i had shoulder surgery i had my my uh ac joint resected and when i took off when i was finally able to take everything off and look in the mirror i looked in the mirror and i I was frightened at first how skinny Mm -hmm. my shoulder my arm everything got and i was like of course you know i'm into working out like a stick oh yeah it's happening to my arm too now keep in mind it's not the same kind of atrophy as like you're active but you're not lifting because i had a you know cast on or whatever so not only am, it's, am I not lifting, I'm not moving. So muscle was gone. Yeah. So I remember I took it off. I looked in the mirror, freaked me out, started working out, and then I was equally blown away by how fast it came back. It was like every day I'd look in the mirror, I'm like, oh crap, it's working. Yeah. You know. You know, you you brought up like DMs that you've been getting, and I still get the, I still get people who think I'm you. We get they get they ask me they're asking me these yeah, questions about you guys. Yeah, yeah how, I was me and you for some reason. How I caffeine cycle, and I'm like, that's not that's not yeah, me. You that's, guys don't cycle that, caffeine yeah, for shit. <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah, you obviously don't. Justin and I are like that's like a uh, that's that's part of our routine. Uh, Sal yeah, is, like Sal's it, the caffeine yeah, cycler. Ask that guy. You, you guys are deep in the in the caffeine addiction. No, mm-hmm. you know, caffeine is a very widely studied chemical, and it clearly an ergogenic supplement. What I mean by ergogenic means performance enhancing it even ha- there are studies that show it in, in even improves cognition yeah, especially if you're tired it's very it's a great great naturally occurring chemical 
if you can tolerate it well, it's actually healthy for you. They show that it may actually prevent uh, or reduce your risk of things like dementia and Alzheimer's, and it's, you know, it's good for your liver. So caffeine is a great, again, it's a naturally occurring chemical found in many, many plants. Now, the problem with caffeine is that it, it, you build a very rapid tolerance to it. We all know this, right? If you have caffeine for the first time, you're on fire. If you have it every single day, within a couple weeks, that effect is almost completely gone. And then you need to have the caffeine to stay normal. Once you go off of it, you feel like dirt until your body acclimates again. And then the caffeine, you know, magic comes back. And so people actually ask me all the time, what's the best way to use caffeine? And so one of the, and studies will actually support this. Save your caffeine for your three hardest workouts of the week. Three. So three to four max. You should have at least four to three, three to four days off every single week if you want to maximize caffeine's effects. Now, this doesn't mean you can't have caffeine every single day. You can. People do it every single day in, in the world. And again, if you, unless you have issues with caffeine tolerance where you get your regular heartbeat or your hormones are all thrown off, or especially if you're a female and your, your estrogen and progesterone levels are off, if you're otherwise healthy, caffeine every day is not, gonna, is, is not an issue. Studies are pretty clear. But if you want the caffeine magic, your best bet is to th- maybe three – I go three to four days a week max, caffeine. And every time I take it, I get that, that boost. I get that great workout. And the days in between, obviously, I'm not as jazzed, but I'm not, like, crashing like I would if I went, you know, months on caffeine and then went totally off. So, you know, uh, on, on that note, uh, here's something that's really, really cool. One of the drawbacks to pre-workout supplements is that they all have tons and tons of stimulants. That's probably that's definitely why people like them because you you drink a you know if you take like a pre workout like Pulse right mm. so we're sponsored by a company called Legion they make a work a pre workout called Pulse and it's got all these other ingredients in there plus it's got caffeine and the caffeine is what gives you that that uh, that aggressive energy well uh, one of the drawbacks to pre workouts people take them all the time if you work out five or six days a week you don't get a break so Pulse also has a stim free version of the pre workout so they have the pre workout with caffeine. And they have the same pre-workout. So what do you do? Flip flop them? That's is exactly it? what I do. Mm. Okay. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday are my heaviest uh, workout days. That's when I'm I'm squatting and benching and deadlifting and overhead pressing heavy. Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, I'm either doing outdoor activity, mobility work, or light what I would consider light trigger session type work uh, with bands or dumbbells or whatever. So on those days, I do the stim free uh, pulse, which has the same thing. It's got the beta alanine. It's got the citrulline. It's got the, uh, you know, uh, the alpha GPC, which is a, a, a choline, which helps with cognition. It's like a nootropic. So you still feel good, but you don't have the caffeine. And so I always get that, that, that again, the caffeine magic. So yeah. And I recommend everybody do that. Otherwise, what happens is if you're, you're so consistent on caffeine, you try to go off. Oh, you got yourself a terrible week ahead of you. Just I remember when Justin. Remember when you went cold turkey? Yes. You had migraines and oh, oh those are dark times. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah, I, was, yeah, I try not to remember that. Yeah, yeah I, I do try. I try hard to like at least limit to one to two, you know, a few days, and then come back to my regular three, four thousand, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I remember Ke- Justin's like, "Yeah, I'm I'm going off caffeine," and so then I'm like, "What well, does that mean?" Like, like, yeah. I said, "How many cups of coffee is that?" He's like, two. Well, yeah. that's two. Well, that was off. the that was the birth of cup zero, right? Right? Was that uh, conversation? Yeah. I mean, that was yeah. the birth of that. It's just was me, like, me like, just wait a second, my that, that first yeah. one doesn't count. So yeah. I'm, you know, technically yeah. I'm off. If I'm I want to lighten the shame, yeah. you know, a little <laughs> bit. So cup zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's Ma'am, a thing. I tell you, when I was younger, though, my tolerance for stimulants was crazy. That was back when we ephedra was over the counter or whatever. Yeah. Oh boy, oh, <laughs> those no. were the those were the nasty days. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, those are powerful. Yeah, kind of crazy. Yeah. So, um, did you guys know that it's uh, Ramadan right now? Right, one of the most popular religions in the world. Um, people all over the world are fasting. For how many days is it? Is from, it I don't remember how many days. Maybe Doug can look it 30 up. Thirty something or forty something. Yeah. Yeah. So what? Forty. How does it work? Is it is it sun? If when, it, when it's sunlight, like nobody eats or, or anything. Sun until up to sundown. This, you you don't you don't have anything. Basically, when it's dark is the only time you can. That's eat. when you can have it. Yeah. And so the reason why I'm bringing this up is I've had um, I was on a podcast. Um, it's a fitness podcast based out of Kuwait. Mm-hmm. And one of the main uh, questions or themes of that podcast was, how do people handle their fitness and nutrition around Ramadan? Now, remember, this is you're talking about billions of people who are following this practice, um, and fitness is becoming a big thing in in these a lot of these regions. And I got a lot of DMs from people asking about that. How long is that, Doug? 
April 23rd to May 23rd. Okay, so that's that's how long the whole pro- how many days is that? We'll figure that out. 30, 30. Yeah, I thought it was four. Days. I thought okay. it was forty for some reason, but okay, thirty. Oh, that's days. A long so thirty time. days. Yeah, yeah, but I, I already know where you're going to go with this because it, I, I think, uh, and I'll let you do your thing. But I, I think it's it, it is interesting how the the fitness space we're always trying to like, you know, hack like how do we maintain the most muscle while we do these other things, and right. the reality of it is it's a it's a different focus. Totally, totally, hundred yeah. percent. So, so two things that happen, and this was just from. My experience with clients who I used to tr- who have trained who practice this spiritual practice, and also from the podcast talking to the podcast host, what a lot of people end up doing is they end up uh, fasting and then binging, and they celebrate with these massive mm-hmm. meals yeah. when the sun goes down, You're defeating the whole purpose, which right? kind of defeats the the whole purpose. So what I said to them is I said, look, I said uh, Ramadan is a spiritual practice. During that, p- the reason why you're doing it is because of your religion, because you are detaching from like food practicing abstaining from things yeah and so is it ideal for fitness and health um not for maybe physical fitness health but it is part of overall health if it's a real spiritual practice for you then yes it's good for you and i would say that's the goal your goal isn't like oh uh, you know i'm fasting but i still want to hit all these prs and stuff it's like this is this is a totally different focus. Well, I, I, I mean, I have a, an analogy for somebody who's not spiritual and doesn't really care about any of that stuff that is that is also related to this. It's very similar. I feel like the conversation that we're having with people right now that are stuck at home and, you know, instead of being upset that you're going to lose a couple pounds of muscle, it now has presented a great opportunity for you to focus on mobility. Mm-hmm. And if all we're thinking about is, oh, well, I have the most muscle and am I going to lose my squat PR? Am I going to lose my deadlift strength that I had? It's like it doesn't matter That's because right. you, you have an opportunity to work on something else that, that will have carryover into your strength. Totally. It may not have direct carryover where as soon as you get back in the gym, you're not going to be stronger or yeah. have a better deadlift. But that that work on that mobility for 30 days or whatever we're out with COVID-19 the benefits that that's going to improve in your overall fitness journey yep. is you're going to reap the benefits of that forever. The same thing I would think for those that are listening that are spiritual and do practices like this. It's not about how much muscle you gain or lose or strength you gain or lose during this time. It's about focusing on what you're supposed to be letting go of and how that is supposed to enhance your overall journey. It's always what you can control. Like I, I love that advice. And I remember going, you going through that when you're having like your Achilles and all that. It's like, reframing like the focus now like what can i actually do to improve myself while going through something completely different like where where does my focus lie what can i you know like vest all my my attention and energy towards and i think that's that's probably the best way to approach something well and the truth is a practice like that if it's if it is to improve uh your spiritual connection or to let go of a bad behavior i know that's normally what a lot Mm -hmm. of them do let go of something like that you know, if you actually do it with that as the main focus and not worrying about the side effects of losing muscle, the truth is, you know, when you got bad things that you're allowing in your life and you now practice letting go of that, mm-hmm. the health benefits from that or the relief of stress, like who knows what what people are letting go of that is also stressing their life. And now you start to eliminate that yeah. and you practice that, that carry over to building muscle and to being stronger. It's there. Well, mm-hmm. I'll give you an example. It's like you have two people, both of them need to produce, uh, both, both of them need to be productive. And let's say they both need to write some kind of a paper. And one guy says, you know what? I can't waste time sleeping. When I'm sleeping, I'm not writing. So I'm going to use drugs and stimulants to keep myself awake so I can continue to be productive and push through. And the other guy says, look, I'm going to sleep so that I'm more productive when I wake up. Who is going to be more successful? So sometimes it's like, you know, it feels like a step back, but it really isn't. You know, you talk about like focusing on mobility, Adam. Oftentimes our strength limits are, are there because our mobility is preventing us from, from getting stronger. Your body has these natural limiters and, be, and your mobility oftentimes is one of them. So when you lay off the strength and now you're taking advantage of it because you're at home and you're working on mobility, then you go back to the gym, you may have lost a little bit of strength, mm-hmm. but then you'll surpass your previous PRs because you've, you've gotten a rid of those limiting factors, which may be mobility. Yeah. Another example is the use of like a physio ball. You know, physio ball for a long time, when physio balls first got introduced into the fit- fitness space, they were phenomenal additions. Uh, for people working out. They're great for engaging stability, core, teaching people balance, perfecting form. When you do an overhead press on a physio ball, you have to press very, very well with your form. It's not as forgiving 
as a stiff, you know, supportive bench, for example. Of course, people, uh, you know, they, they bastardized it for a while and did mm. the craziest, stupidest shit on it. But the reality is physio balls used properly, you know, I would see tremendous benefits in my clients who would train that way for a little while and then go back to their traditional resistance training and see the strength gains. Going. Yeah, it places them in that environment where they have to brace. They have to be conscious of, you know, keeping their spine, you know, in a certain position and being able to do all that while pressing then. So it is very beneficial for that for somebody who doesn't, you know, necessarily like can't understand how to how to feel their way through that on a bench. Uh, you know, it's it's another tool to kind of add into the mix. I don't think there was ever a day I trained as a trainer uh, in the eight to 10 clients I probably averaged a day that I did not pull a physio ball out at least once. True, mm -hmm. 100%. Not a single day in my entire it's, career. It was, it's probably That's how valuable I found it, but it's unfortunate that it was abused, like you said, and bastardized so much that we have to like kind of talk shit about, okay, yeah. now it's ridiculous when you start balancing on it to do a yeah, squat. Yeah, start doing seal stuff where they're like, you know, on top of their knees and clapping. And, you know. But for <laughs> a, a lot of my clients, especially when they were first getting started with me, uh, that was a go-to. Mm -hmm. It was a go-to for me is, is to, to utilize a tool like that for oh, sure. Oh, totally. It's, it would, I, I would say of all the tools that I use as a trainer, besides barbells and dumbbells, the physio ball was the number one. Has to be, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Anyway, did you guys see what uh, Elon Musk did? No, you were <laughs> a man crushing, and I and you want to share. Tell well, me, uh, yeah, you did. I mean, wasn't he? He was he was talking trash about like letting everybody out, like in terms of like the the whole lockdown. Well, right? he's been since day one. Yeah. He's been he's been against. He's it. been a po like you know, Bill Gates was coming out on one side, right? That, they were they were pitting the two of them together, right? Like Bill Gates is saying this, and Elon Musk is saying this is ridiculous. And so what what has came out? Give us our freedom back. Yeah, yeah that that's it. Elon yeah. Musk is tweeting and he's like, open up the country, you know, uh, free America. Like, don't let, you know, and he calls it fascism. And he says, look, he said, and this is what he said. Part, I'm going to paraphrase kind of what he said. He said, if people want to stay home voluntarily, he goes, that's totally fine. Yeah. Ordering them to stay home. He said, that's fascism. And of course, there's people on both sides. There's people who are like, I agree with him. And then there's other people saying he's stupid. Stay in your lane type of deal. I put up a po I put up a poll in my my Instagram story. 50-50? It's 50-50. I bet. Yeah. It's yeah, almost yeah. equal. 50-50 wow. of people who so I uh, let me tell you, I love Elon. I love the guy. I don't always agree with him, but I love him because uh you know, he's a major leader in the tech space. He's got a car company that's tremendously valued on the stock market. And the dude is not afraid to smoke a joint on Joe Rogan and say something that at the moment for a leader to say would be considered extremely risky. Oh yeah, and yeah, he uh, speaks yeah. up Become and he says a target it. right away. And that's what I like because I, I feel like Elon is real. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like he's the he's he's being well. No doubt, a lot of people feel that way. So to have somebody like that kind of voice it, I think is interesting. Oh, dude, they, what did they say? Uh, Thirty million jobless claims. Yeah, they're well, saying the tops. Speaking of real, let me tell you something that's unreal. What, what is that? What's unreal? Oh, Ma Magic spoon. Okay, dropped. Birthday cake. I saw that, dude. <laughs> dude, I put that in my story. I almost Bro, lost my mind. That is, a, and I've already had somebody who's already got it, so I haven't got it yet. Are I'm, you serious? Yeah, yeah. And they why told, didn't we get it? You know what they told me to do? Huh. They said they they wrote a really long. I, I should have kept it so I could read read the person and give them a shout out. The person obviously will know who they are by what I, sh I share what they said. They were just you know giving kudos to a lot of the partners and companies we work with and the fans of all. And they said you know you know the birthday cake. I already got it. And they said, let me tell you. Mix the chocolate, uh, the cocoa with it, and it tastes like chocolate birthday cake. Oh my god! Oh my they god. said it's like heaven in your mouth. I'm interesting, because like, oh. that was the one that wasn't my favorite. So mixing that would That's might a, actually I know be so interesting. I'm so ex I'm like a little. Are you still doing? Well, you know how I am, right? With oh, the with the oh, with, yeah. with things that they have to taste good. Like that's why magic. Well, I even took I took some of the fruity home because we still had a box or two here in the studio, and like I brought it back, you know, to my kids and. You know, they, they've sort of lost a little bit of luster with it because, like, I actually didn't know this. They they changed the formulation of it. Mm. It's even more, like, crazy delicious. I, I don't know what they did, but... Uh, if didn't you, Max tell you? He did. So they changed uh, one of the fats that was in there, and people were a little bit up in arms. And I wish I saved what he said because okay. I asked Max, is this a bad or a good thing? Well, and he goes, no, it's perfectly fine. The, the, and I can't remember what it was, but he says... What they used is high in uh, these particular fats that are totally fine. So even though 
when you read it, some people freak out. I forgot what it was. I'll have to look it it's up. It's like a so. sunflower seat or something like that. I right? don't remember exactly. Yeah, okay. I'll have to look it but up. But the reformulation is bomb. Dude, either way, and, and I'm seriously not bullshitting you guys. My my kids were like, I want that for a dessert. Like, yeah. the, the, like they were asking <laughs> that's that. That's how I use it. I was like, are you serious? I like, don't know. That, that's a win for me, dude. Because, yeah. like, otherwise they're going to try and get, you know, some cookies or whatever. The, like, garbage shit. At least they get some protein. I can it. actually only count on one hand how many times I've actually had it for breakfast. It's always a dessert. It's dessert. It's, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. it's. You have it every it's day, nice don't you? Uh, close. I'm trying because you made me feel guilty about the last time we did it. Because you ate commercial. all the fucking boxes. <laughs> yeah, 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 the last the last yeah. Magic Spoon commercial, yeah. I felt a little guilty. Like, like, so I've been trying to like limit it a little bit. But it's like what happened to me with skinny. Death. I mean, it's complete. It's completely eliminated my ice cream cravings. Mm. So any time that I what think, if you sprinkle it on ice cream? Oh God, dude, you know what I'm saying? Don't start, like don't, don't, don't start cold. shit like that. Don't start that. You know what I'm saying? It's fine the way it is. You know, and really, it's. I mean. You know, Halo ice cream got a bunch of popularity and some of that because of the macros. It's very macro friendly. It has extra protein in it, and so I've utilized their, their that brand before. Yeah, I don't but like it. Really. You, I know it's obviously it does not compete to like real freaking ice cream or gelato. But yeah. I tell you what, Magic Spoon gives me that same sensation of like this this you know cold milk is inside of it, and then I'm mm-hmm. eating the. I just eating. picture grown ass Adam and Justin in front of the TV. With oh their, my god, uh, that was me last night with uh, their birthday cake cereal. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to watch these shows, dude. You know, I, honestly, though, this has really kind of bummed me out because Westworld has not delivered this season. Mm. I'm sorry. I know all that shit we talked well, early dude, on. Dude, because the first episode, I was like excited. I'm like, wow, it's going to go so, a new place. It's going to be interesting. New world. Lame. It ha- I, I actually fell off. This is what, the third season? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I fell off the last two episodes. And so because it just didn't hook me enough to. And that's when I always know like a season's or a show's losing its luster as if it. <sighs> I can't wait. You know, like Such when you a can't bummer, wait. dude, because it was so epic. I'll, like they have so, so many places they could go with it. I know. I'll tell you one, though, that is binge worthy that uh, I, I resisted watching because the previews didn't sell me on it. My sister, who I trust her recommendation, said, go watch Black as Fuck. And you, she goes, you're, you're welcome. Yeah. And I'm like, really? I, I passed like, by that one on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, just it didn't it didn't hook me to want to see it. And so I watched it. And even the first episode, I was like, uh, OK, it took me a minute to to understand how they were they were positioning it and putting it together. It's very similar to if you guys are fans of The Office. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I love Huge The Office. Of the, Office uh, the Office is one of my mm-hmm. my favorite uh, all time uh, comedies. And it's, so it's done like that. So uh, if you know that going into it, it's it's I, maybe even it's the same writer. I don't even know if it is or is not, but I I do know that that's the format. And just like The Office, the very first time you, if you've never watched The Office and you tune in the first time, you might be like, "This is weird. This is dumb." Yeah. But then you you get it and you get what they're doing, and then you really fall in love with it. That's how uh, black a, it's black hashtag AF right. So right. that's the name of the Netflix show. And it's hilarious. Really? It's, yeah, yeah. It's really good. I watched yeah, um, Extraction, I think, on Netflix. With, uh, oh, God, what's the, what's oh, the guy's God, name? Justin yes, Thor. I'm... You know, because your wife talks about that guy. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> what's his I name? I blocked his name out of my memory. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm talking about. I know yeah. Thor, dude. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. he's always talking about how hot he is. Always right? bringing him up. <laughs> yeah. you know? it's like so handsome. Every time we have like a family party, <laughs> yeah. she says, like, oh, he's so handsome. Oh, Thor. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, is, is Thor on tonight? Yeah. Anyway, but anyway, the the Extraction, It's it's a classic. Uh, action movie so if you're looking for like a, a predictable plot like a, or a plot that's not predictable forget it but the action in it the fight scenes are some of the best fight scenes i've seen in a long time the car chase scenes yeah they're great it's really well made and the fight i'll tell you why the fight scene's good because he's throwing in jujitsu he's throwing like legit jujitsu moves and muay thai moves and oh yeah whoever dude, hey. whoever choreographed it did a very very hey, good job awful bro no, uh, it's not. Yeah, <laughs> Justin hey, will like it. Hey, yeah, hey. I got a nice division here. Du- du- Doug and spectrum. I have these like silent conversations. Just him and I. I'm gonna put him yeah. on Front Street right now. Like, <laughs> we, like, like we ne- him and I always are like we go with the opposite. Yeah, of what yeah. Sal, Sal, Sal talk about yeah. show. Then everybody leaves. And it's normally Doug and I still here, and Doug will be like, I ain't watching that shit. Yeah, yeah. I, watch <laughs> yeah I ain't watching that shit either. No, Listen so, to I, well, I like Sal- I like John Wick. So, so, there you yeah. go. Yeah. If, if you like, compare it to that. Did you guys watch John Wick? I did. Okay, so it's like that. Like you know what's gonna happen, but it's fun to watch. Uh, yeah, it was a fun movie. I mean, we- weak plot, but like very heavy action. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, mean, like, I like deep ass fucking movies. Too. I'm not Come saying you don't, but 16 you, and you do have a lot. <laughs> 
Yeah. Thank hey, you, man. Sal. You got to at least hey, throw hey, some hey, shade. Hey, right hey, back. hey, yeah. hey. Listen here, Linda. Listen here. Uh, That's only when I'm sick and I want to feel better about myself. Right, <laughs> yeah, right, right dude. <laughs> you want to twist that like <laughs> nipple piercing. Yeah. You guys, you're also the one that introduced us to that stupid dating one. What was it that Love is Blind? <laughs> Did you, oh, hey, my you God, binged bro. it, though. Hey, oh, stupid. Now, only because I was super sick. Okay, now that I thought I had the Rona. So it turned out I didn't have the Rona. I gave the analogy the other day or comparison that what that those type of shows that's junk food right mm. it's junk food it is it is literally it's feeding, bro it's the junk it's, food it's of bonbons. junk food it's not even junk food junk food would be like a cheeseburger fries and whatever no, this no, was no, like no. a chili cheese fry yeah, no it's like candy it's yeah. like you know Ugh. a burger has some like value like a burger like has some value it's like circus yeah. peanuts like that how oh, bad it was yeah, yeah, yeah. like who made those yeah. no like it's the no name brand candy yeah. but what do you do you keep getting coming back peanuts for more it tastes like kind of orange it it oh. hooked, it <laughs> Like who? Like what high asshole came up with those? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I love Did them. Did you ever think about that? I don't. They eat the fuck out of when yeah. I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> They're so disgusting. Anyway, they have a new dating show on Netflix. I saw the it's, hot, the hot one. Or yeah, too hot to handle or dude, something like that. that. Absolute. So garbage. here's the premise. I just watched the trailer. For here's that. the and I, I I don't I'm sure I'm messing up the premise because I couldn't last longer than 50 minutes, right? Because I watched that other dating show. They though. can't have sex with each other. And I, is I, the whole premise. I thought to myself, I'm like, if I could watch that, then I should be able to watch anything, right? Mm -hmm. This one is they they got hot people, quote unquote, on this island, mm -hmm. and then they can't sleep with each other, and if they do, they get fined for it. Yeah. And these are I, I'm not joking, okay. They pick the dumbest people in the world. I, <laughs> well, I, th I honestly think I mean, that they, they, TV, they, dude, they the actually best. sought out sure they people sure they who do. were borderline. They, they, they yeah. can't even qualify to be in a normal classroom. That's how dumb <laughs> these people are. It was so they're, terrible. They're so I, hot, they get away with it. I no, they not even that hot, I, I told you what's happening right now with shelter in place. Like these, The teenage kids are screwing up the algorithms Ew. because they're, these are all the top-ranked shows right now. It's like, yeah. for sure... This is a bunch of 13-year-old and 15-year-old boys and girls Dude. that are watching and binging television, and they're screwing up Give the algorithm. Give us a real show again, man. You know what? Billions is coming back. Sunday. Uh, Dude, I can't wait. I love that show. And uh, Mandalorian. Like, So I got I got all pumped up, and I was like excited to bring this to the show. I'm like, yeah, they're going to you know, move the season up, season two of Mandalorian. But no, it's the, they're just teasing us. It's mm. basically uh, May the 4th. They're doing this whole thing with Mandalorian where they're like having this discussion of how they like film. It and they brought all these different directors in and stuff, and so it's like they, they just do like a deep dive into the episodes. So what what's your guys' thought on this? Because I've been thinking about this with with Disney for a while, right? Like, and, and somebody in our forum posted the you know Disney revenue driving down and Netflix coming sure. up and being like, oh Netflix is the, and I'm like get out of here. The theme parks have been closed for like which is a, a monster revenue yeah, for them. And yeah. The, yeah, don't even compare Netflix to Disney. Those are not even close no. to the same companies. Uh, so when so saying that or knowing that, right? What is your guys' thoughts on their strategy? Because they really are not pumping a ton of content. Like part of me feels like they know that it's not, mm -hmm. like, it's not, and it's not like they don't have the money and the resources to potentially do that. I kind of feel like it's 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 more methodical about how they release and they do something. And so, mm -hmm. what is your thoughts on why Disney isn't like really? I think that they have to be very careful of their brand, and I agree with you. I think if Netflix because they're still trying to do movies, yeah, and look what Netflix does. Netflix has this approach where they take a bu bunch of spaghetti and they throw it against the wall. And so, when you guys look at Netflix originals, one out of every how many is really good, right? right? Disney isn't going to do that. They're not going to put out shit. They put out well. good stuff. Their writing is excellent. So I think that the, you're right. Their strategy is probably to be yeah, slow. Yeah, I th honestly, I, I think that this is a whole new monster for them to even think about because they're still doing movies. They're doing Marvel movies. They're doing Star Wars movies. And now it's like, oh, wait a minute. we got to figure out a streaming type content. And so Mandalorian was their first home run. And, you know, they were thinking about adding all these different like variations of some of the movies from Marvel, some of the movies from, you know, Star Wars and trying to create their like different character stories. But it's like that takes a long time to develop, uh, well, you know, a good thing. And all the back end ways that you're going to monetize of it. I agree with you, Sal. I think it's really that is they yeah, sell merchandise. Yeah, and, yeah. it is. like I mean, no one's right. buying a Netflix original series like doll. Stranger or, Things. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but maybe. That, and that was like an anomaly. That was, that was their number and hit. Yeah. 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 First question is from B-Boy Warrior. How do elite gymnasts get so strong and perform so well despite such a high training frequency with not a lot of rest? Oh, good, good question. Love this question. So, so here's why, okay? Gymnasts do not go out and practice their, their moves on the rings and on the horse and all that stuff as a workout. They are practicing. They're mm -hmm. constantly practicing. This is what we talk about on the podcast. 
This is a very valuable thing to understand with your training. Gymnasts get phenomenal results in physically, even though they're not necessarily training for that. Remember, gymnasts aren't necessarily training to build and sculpt their bodies. They're trying to get better at all of the positions and moves that they do and their stability. And so they don't go out there thinking to themselves, I'm going to hammer my biceps, I'm going to hammer my shoulders, I'm going to hammer my legs. They go out there and think, I'm going to practice and perfect the skill. And when you're practicing a skill, you don't practice a skill to fatigue where you can't do it anymore because then you're not able to practice it, right? Not mm-hmm. to mention that proprioception is the foundation to all pursuits. So body awareness, right? Body mm-hmm. awareness, is, and I, I don't think there is a sport that focuses on that more than gymnasts. Yeah, that's your base. I mean, we remember the – Maybe divers or – Not even. Think, yeah. no, gymna- gymnasts still serve because everything a diver does for body control, a gymnast yeah. does and some. So – their, their body control and awareness of their body in space is uh, beyond almost every other athlete by a ton. In fact, when we did that, that interview with Chad Wesley, uh, you know, we, we talked about, you know, if you were to pick a sport that would, you know, lay the foundation for the super athlete, yeah. it would be gymnastics. Totally. Well, that totally resonated with me. That's why kids are doing parkour. That's why they're doing things like that where it's like exploring – all these different ways to uh, move the body and, and become aware of, uh, you know, the position that they're in and how to then kind of work their way out of it. Gymnasts are masters at this. And and to be fair, like gymnasts, like this is really taxing on the body. Like yes. they're really, they're, they're not old. You don't see a lot of old gymnasts because, you know, it, it is very demanding. Like this frequency, this style of training is, is really hard on the body, but uh, you know, like they, they'll, they'll, they'll do max effort, but they do rest quite a bit and they're just trying to make sure that they're, they're constantly practicing the skill and sharpening the skill of it so i don't know if i told you guys or not but i i plan to enroll it's i think it's called like tumbling or something early on for yeah. and i forget how old max needs to be when when i enroll in that yeah 100 yeah, percent. i will do that and hope that it's something he enjoys and likes doing and it's funny because i think you know my generation and definitely the generation before that would be like totally frowned upon as a, as you know enrolling your son in gymnastics oh, mm. that would be you know that would be totally demasculinizing him to put him in something like that or it's Dude, so- one of the best investments I've ever made in my life and I will recommend this to anybody who has boys is get uh get a trampoline get a huge trampoline that's like you know in covered encased they have they have their skills and their body awareness like went up a thousand percent after that and they're just they just live on that thing it's one thing that you always go to jump flip and they, they just experiment they figure their body out yeah. and they move yeah. yeah gymnasts are were one of the um uh, the things that motivated me or inspired me to to come up with the trigger session concept for maps anabolic because i had gymnasts that worked for me as trainers and i remember just being blown away by their muscular development of their arms in particular now with I, I used to think to myself like you know they're not trained to failure and they're not letting their biceps rest a full week before they hit them again like how is this even possible so i started thinking about this over and over again and really it's the frequent practice it's the frequent stimulation so it would be the diff- it would be like if you went to the gym and you practiced squatting benching overhead pressing and rowing you know four or five days a week not going out there to hammer yourself yeah, in fact not or trying not to be sore that's right yeah. your goal is to go out there and just practice these movements and get really really good at them so that someone could look at you and say wow that's the best looking squat i've ever seen if you did that with that level of frequency the side effect of that would be lots of muscular development you built really really strong uh muscles and you would build quite a bit of muscle doing that now just doing that i don't think is the formula for maximal muscle gain but it is a great formula for muscle gain, which is why you see gymnasts looking the way they do. But there's one more piece of that, okay? I, don't, I also think it's not fair to look at a high-level athlete and look at their muscular development and say, okay, if I train like them, I'm going to look like them. Because there's a bit of a, of a selection bias when you're looking at that high level of an athlete. Mm-hmm. When you're looking at you know, top state level, you know, you know, maybe you know, nationwide champion or, or worldwide champion gymnasts, you're looking at people who train a lot for years and years and years, totally dedicated, will also have extremely amazing genetics for that given sport. So same reason why, look, if you swam and you swam like crazy and you train like an Olympic swimmer. You'll d- never be Michael Phelps. Yeah, you're not going to get short legs and a long torso right. and long arms for it. You know, Michael Phelps was born 
with the genes to have short legs, long torso, flat rib cage, and long arms, which happens to make you uh, give you an advantage in swimming. So you're not going to necessarily look like a gymnast by training them. The best way to build muscle is to understand this un- th- some of these concepts and inject it in your training. And if you follow like a MAPS program, you'll see and you'll notice, although it's much more common nowadays, but especially when we first came out uh, five years ago, it wasn't common to see a resistance training routine that had you training your whole body three days a week. It just wasn't. We were the ones that really come out and say, hey, this is actually what works better. Now you're starting to see more and more people doing it. And it came from watching people and athletes like gymnasts. Next question is from Rebsquesto Fitness. Should you train and eat differently depending on body shape, such as mesomorph, ectomorph, endomorph, or is that a myth? Have you guys been tagged on the the, the little things that have been going around right now with the fasting? Is that and the coming body? back? Well, yeah, Just I think that's where this question is coming from. I was tagged at least 15 or 20 times on uh, these these people that are doing posts right now that are, you know, uh, promoting intermittent fasting and that the the types of windows, you know, intermittent fasting windows based off of your body type. Really? Yeah. Yes. And and it, Pure I know that this question isn't exact directly uh, connected to this, but it's very it's related to this. Mm-hmm. That it, it's all in all, it's bullshit. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it, it is. So um, I had to look this up because I forgot. So uh, somatotypes are what we're talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Mesomorph, ectomorph endomorph so a ectomorph the it, it describes the classic skinny Tall, skinny person yeah like the skinny hard gainer right so uh, skinny bones narrow shoulders does, doesn't gain weight very uh, very easily at all either muscle or body fat typically left to their own devices without training or whatever not very physically strong right a mesomorph is your natural bodybuilder your natural athlete builds muscle very easily Stays relatively lean easily, naturally strong. And then your endomorph is someone who gains weight very easily, thicker boned. Um, they gain more body fat. They also gain more muscle. They tend to be bigger uh, people. Cakes. Now, the, the, this, was, this is a, a form of uh, taxonomy. So this is like what they would do when they describe like animal shapes and stuff like that. And it was mm-hmm. developed in the 1940s by a psychologist, William Herbert Sheldon. He's the guy that came up with this. Now, can you classify people in these categories? Sure. There are people that fit into these categories, but most people don't fit neatly into ectomorph, mesomorph, or or endomorph. Most people are a combination Mm -hmm. of all of these things. Like I I lean much more towards ectomorph, right? I tend to have more of that body type, that hard gainer body type. I wouldn't consider myself a pure hundred percent ectomorph. I probably ectomorph with some mesomorphic, you know, qualities. I'm I'm like meso endo. Yeah, so like and so this has been discarded and for for a little while now but but here's the here's the answer to your question forget your your body type in in terms of categorizing like this go off of your own individual body so should you train and eat differently depending on your body yeah absolutely Mm -hmm. your training should match your body your diet should match your body not somebody else's because your individual body is going to respond and react differently. Yeah, than I think. Else. Th- I mean, and again, this is marketing. This is this is a way that they can kind of uh, reduce options for people out there because there's so many variables that that dictate, you know, what you should be eating, you know, how you should be training your body, and this is why we're always saying depends, you know, individual wise. But you know, marketing they don't want to deal with. Uh, you know, all those different variables. They just want to like corral like certain types to speak to them uh, more generally. And so this is definitely like the general version of like all the different body types mm-hmm. we see. Well, and to your point about marketing, it's it's our fault as consumers because we want to be put in a box. We yes. want to identify with a group. Just tell me what to do. Right. And when you do something like this and you say like, oh, this per- this type of body type has a hard time putting muscle on and they can't. They, and it's like, that's me. Sure. That's totally me. And so then I and then so the the marketers know this and then they know, oh, now if we we can get them to identify with this group. Now we can sell them on the idea that the reason why they weren't seeing results is because they weren't doing what's specific for them. And, you know, that it's it's a bunch of hogwash. It's not true at, at all. And in fact, why this got debunked is because where this this what this doesn't share or talk about is metabolism. And the metabolism is even though it, when you may be uh, have a genetic, uh, you know, a predisposition to a faster or slower metabolism, it's a free flowing thing that you can change, good or bad, right? You can speed it up or slow it down depending on your behaviors and habits, not only 
what you do physically, but also how you eat. So there's always an exception to the rule for each one of these things. You can be in one of those categories, but struggling to gain muscle or, or mm-hmm. burn body fat that's not supposedly in that category because of where your metabolism currently is. Yeah. Now, I will say this. There definitely are people that seem to fit perfectly in each of these categories. Like if I describe an ectomorph, yeah. uh, who's your classic hard gainer, doesn't gain weight very easily, seems to have a roaring metabolism. They eat as much as everybody else, and yet they're super skinny while everybody else is obese, um, and it's hard for them to build muscle. I can definitely speak to that person. I can talk to that person, and if you fit neatly in that category, and that literally is you, then there are some things you may want to consider. Like, let's say you're an ectomorph, and you do fit in that category. Most people don't, but let's say you do. Then you're probably going to have to consume something like 22 calories for every pound of body weight. Now I would never give that number to somebody who's not fit, who doesn't fit neatly in that category, but someone who does, then that's a, that's the amount of calories you probably need to eat. And I've read studies on this. So that would mean a 150 pound classic ectomorph. Let's say that actually existed. That person would need to consume about 3,300 calories just to gain weight. Now, if you're a 150 pound average person, um, 3,300 calories might make you just gain a ton of body fat. So there are people that seem to fit in that, but it's in terms of categorizing people in these neat three categories, I mean, it's almost never the case. Next question is from Coach Carruthers. For long-term health and overall all longevity for lifting, would trap bar deadlifts be better than using a barbell? Mm, another good question. Yeah, you know, mm. I tell you what, uh, the, the barbell deadlift. Lots of debate around this too, by the way. There oh, is. Yeah. The barbell deadlift just requires hates it. it mm. requires more skill than a trap bar deadlift. So both of them, they're similar, but they're not the same. Both of them are where you're lifting a weight off the ground. There's a bit of hip hinging involved in both of them more in the deadlift than in the trap bar deadlift. Um, But the barbell deadlift just requires more skill. So anytime an exercise requires more skill, that means that there's a higher potential risk for injury. Now that doesn't mean that that it's going to hurt you. If you have good form with both of them, then you're fine. But when I would train the average person, they're far more likely to be able to do a trap bar deadlift properly than they would be able to do a barbell deadlift. So I think you could, I could make the argument for both ways. Now, one way would be, well, if you can't barbell deadlift, let's figure out why. Let's work on your mobility. Let's work on your hip hinging. Let's work on your stability so that you can do it. Then the other side of me says, look, the average person might not be able to address a lot of those things or know what to do if they're not working with a trainer, in which case a trap bar deadlift is an easier, less skilled version of uh, you know picking up a, a weight off the floor exercise. Yeah, I like the trap bar for distributing the force kind of uh, a little bit more effectively like that. Like if you're talking about your average person, I think that there's definite value in using uh, the trap bar. And, and this is something, too, where like uh, Courtney has had issues with her back – even though like mobility has been something we've been working on and really like connecting and, and, and working on bracing and, and, you know, the overall skill of, of, you know, a deadlift and doing a regular standard deadlift, uh, there's still issues that occur, you know, in her back that, that, that speak to her. And so, you know, I prefer her to use the uh, trap bar for that reason. So we can kind of distribute that force a little more, uh, you know, both anterior and posteriorly. So, uh, but, but I do kind of also agree a little bit, uh, you know, with Ripito's argument of the, the fact that the trap bar swings a little bit. And so you have to account for the fact sure. that it's a different, it's a different uh, monster uh, in general. So it's, I, I don't know that I would class them both as like the same animal. Well, I, I think that, uh, and th- the reason why this is a good discussion is because there are experts and high level coaches that have take, have taken a staunch position on both sides of this. Mm-hmm. Um, and the truth is I'm, I'm with you, Sal on uh, it, it depends. And uh, I utilize both. And if I had a client, many times uh, I have a client do trap bar because there is so much. Like I get a client, let's just say, who is in their mid fifties, and they've never trained with me, and they've never had anybody, and they're they have a lot to work on. They've got a lot broken down. You know, they're they got stuff. Their knees are collapsing in. They've got an asymmetrical shift. They've they've got all these issues that I'm trying to work on as a coach and as a trainer, and getting them under the the the, the barbell deadlift. You, it just exaggerates all these problems. And so that doesn't mean that I say, oh, well, let's just eliminate the barbell deadlift and only do trap bar because you can do that with good form. I may have them do the trap bar deadlift, but then my ultimate goal is to get them to be able to do a barbell deadlift. So 
I kind of, that's the position that I take. It reminds me very similar. And I, you know, I remember this is kind of this is actually how uh, Eugene Tao and I met was uh, he did a post on Instagram kind of, uh, you know, shaming the, 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 the coaches out there that d push the uh, squat so much and that, you know, technically the hack squat is uh, as beneficial or more beneficial for developing your quads. And my c comment to him is that I don't like that message. I don't like, because what I know is that a lot of people, including someone like myself as a kid, would hear that and go, oh, see, I don't need to do squats. I'll just do hack squats and I'll be able to develop that. And and that's how him and as I- As if it's an even trade. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's not. They're different movements. They both carry lots of value and a benefit. And it should they both should be tools in your, your tool belt. But the truth is, you you if you can't do the barbell deadlift or you can't do the barbell back squat, you know we have things like the hack squat, we have things like the trap bar deadlift, which are to like Sal said, easier movements to teach someone to do and a great place to utilize them. But as coaches and as people that are pursuing overall strength and fitness, you shouldn't eliminate the idea that you don't want to work towards being able to barbell deadlift. One of the best things you could do for your overall development, uh, fitness, success for muscle and fat loss, one of the best possible things you could do is find traditional exercises that you can't do well and learn how to do them well. One of the best possible th things you could do. If you can't barbell squat well, then figure out why you can't fix that problem. And it may take you time. It may take you months. Sometimes it takes years but work towards being able to do it and that work towards being able to do it and then eventually being able to do it produces tremendous results. And this is true for both the deadlift and the trap bar deadlift. But again, trap bar deadlift, nine out of 10 times, when I get a brand new client, I start them on trap bar deadlifts before I move them to a barbell yeah. deadlift. And look, with my son, I'm training my son right now. That's what we're starting, trap bar deadlifts. Am I going to not have him do a barbell deadlift? Of course not. We're going to move to that eventually, but this just requires less skill. It's easier to start with. Next question is from Maria the Moriarty. In your opinion, what are the top three sports that indirectly give the best aesthetics? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Well, I think, uh, you know, interesting we stack this in these questions because uh, I may not have thought about this uh, unless we had just talked about it. And mm -hmm. uh, gymnasts would probably be up there. Uh, gymnasts, gymnasts are up there. Sprinters, I think. Are the only thing one. about gymnasts that their aesthetics, uh, are, are, that rates their aesthetics a little lower is their legs. Uh, gymnast, male gymnasts typically don't have legs that match their upper body. It's disadvantageous to have those kind of legs when you're mm -hmm. on the rings and you're doing, you don't want big muscular legs matching their big muscular arms when they do that. Um, I think, but I do think overall their aesthetics are phenomenal. I would say, uh, boxers, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh grapplers, uh, wrestlers. It depends what position to oh. football wise. Like, uh, I would say, you know, if, if, if you're looking at, running backs or you're looking at uh you know wide receivers or something like that where it's a little more of a skill position that you'd probably like have like a better physique uh, obviously than a lineman yeah but, uh, yeah i would disagree on the boxing one for sure uh, really yeah i would just you think like evander holyfield and, i mean some of those I, those are anomalies right those are guys that just looked amazing and stuff that or probably looked amazing before they even started boxing or had the genetic potential to look like that oh, because no, here's why i disagree with boxing because boxing is heavily uh, focused on uh, h high repetitions and low rest periods and they don't strength train nearly as much as most other athletes and they also are normally very forward everything is rounded forward oh yeah, yeah they're, yeah. they're going to mold to their sport that's right sure. so the, the the aesthetics on a on a boxer it's more rare we get an evander holyfield you know or lennox lewis they have these great physiques i think you normally see not the best physiques uh aesthetically well, I've, pleasing I, I think too you've seen that change dramatically in basketball too like because of the physicality has become like more on the forefront you've seen a lot more players like really you know build and develop muscles uh to combat that but now it's already shifting a little bit more uh you know in the other like the kevin durant where it's like you know you're longer lankier and i don't know it's, it's interesting to watch sports kind of evolve with that it's a fun debate I, I have a different way to present this because I, I, something just came uh just came to me I, I judging the sports for the best aesthetics by the top representatives might not be fair because no. you made a great point. Boxing's very high, lots of repetitions. Yet Evander Holyfield looked like an amateur bodybuilder. Is it because of the boxing or yeah. is it because Evander Holyfield probably had 
incredible for sure muscle building genetics. Or like UFC, like what was it? Is it Fedorov or, or not? Fedorov? Oh, Feder, uh, Fedor, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah right. right. You can use that same thing like with basketball. David Robinson, like Velasquez David sure, Robinson right. had one of the craziest looking physiques. So what as a basketball player, but it's not because of basketball. He just, so what sport, not strength training sport, because obviously we could cheat and say Olympic lifting or powerlifting. What sport right. would do you think if they just did that sport? Would pre- would present for the average person the most, the the best chances at aesthetics, overall aesthetics. What would that? I think gymnastics probably has to be there. Yeah, right? gymnastics yeah. is one. I think we can all agree yeah. on that. I, I think that just, I mean, going right back to our first question, it lays the probably the best foundation to build upon anyway. So yeah. I feel like some people would say like soccer, but they're like tiny. No, dude. You know what I mean? No, no soccer- because that dude, look at men's health and all that. They're always being like soccer guys are the best. Physiques. Well, that's again, those are the He's, top athletes yeah, in the yeah, world yeah, yeah. at There's that. There's only sport. like one or two David Beckhams. You know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah. take it. You take. I guarantee if you put David Beckham on a traditional resistance training routine, he'd build muscle like totally like a genetic freak yeah Yeah. you know well here's the truth like when you talk about building muscle and aesthetics no sport is really ideal i mean it's not Mm. that i think Mm. we look at athletes too when we look at these top golf these yeah these (laughs) john daly yeah yeah. i mean sports uh the the goal is not to build a bunch of muscle it's become very efficient at whatever your sport is just to be good at the sport yeah and most sports are not uh, heavily focused around or it's not advantageous to have a bunch of muscle mass mm-hmm. on your body so yeah. it's really not a good place to even look at like hey what sport should i do if i want to have like the overall best aesthetics now, if you pick a yeah, sport there's no balanced physiques anymore yeah right? and if you pick a sport pick it because you like doing it and it's, it's healthy for you and you enjoy doing it i wouldn't pick a sport necessarily yeah. because i'm trying to change my aesthetics the most effective thing you could do to to manipulate your aesthetics and sculpt your body is lift weights. Yep. There is no no other form of exercise that lets you pick parts of your body to develop and change uh, for the pursuit of aesthetics like resistance training. Right, and the and the example that everybody is thinking in their head like is is always anomalies. It's you yeah. can I can pick out a, a person in every sport, every mm-hmm. sport that has this, has this awesome <laughs> except for maybe that one uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. that has an awesome physique and it has less to do with the sport and more to do with their genetic yeah, potential yeah, yeah, yeah. and with that go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides resources and books you can also find your three favorite podcast hosts on instagram you can find justin at mindpump justin you can find me at mindpump sal adam at mindpump adam and believe it or not doug is on instagram too Believe it or not, Doug's also there. If you want to see behind the scenes, you want to see the equipment we use when we record, if you want to see what the studio looks like, go follow Doug at Mind Pump Doug.